All right, and for the last part of this lesson, we'll do number three. Uh, that is the potential from a point charge. So we want to talk about the potential, not the potential energy, from a point charge. Okay, and what happens with a potential from a point charge? Okay, so remember we had, if we had, say, a uh, charge here. Actually, I should have said a spherical source, but we'll deal with that. Um, so if we have a spherical source here, we have electric field lines coming directly out of it, equal in all directions. So that's your electric field E. And then you'll have a potential, let's use lavender, I guess this is the color, around here getting smaller and smaller as you do that. So let's say this is 3V, 2V, 1V. And that gives you something that looks a little bit like uh, this. Right? We have our axes here, our potential, as a function of the radial distance, the distance from the center of the um, sphere. So if we had a point here, this would be the radius of the sphere. Um, will look like this. I'll put some of those things here. And this will be the point at infinity. It's basically zero there. And that's by definition. And then the potential looks like this, and it actually goes to infinity way up here. And that's, but that's only because, you know, you're out, out, out of there. So this is, this is because you're in the inside. So maybe I should. Okay, so this is sort of ideal if you have a point particle, it'll do this, go off to infinity. But if you have a real Thing. If you have a uniform charge distribution, then I believe the potential let's see, is flat. For a, specific, for a shell, it's flat, actually. So this is for a shell. So if this has all of its charge on the exterior, like in a metal, then you end up with something like that. If it's uniformly charged, you'll have something like this, so that the potential will go to zero. At zero. So it depends on the shell. So we have um, this thing up here is the point charge, the spherical shell, and the uniform thing. So that's the point charge is like that, the spherical shell is like that, and then for the uniform charge, it's uniformly charged like that, and that could happen in an insulator not in the middle. So those are the three things on the inside of the radius. We want to care we care about what happens on the outside of that radius. So in that case, our potential is equal to this KE that we've seen before, right? The Coulomb constant times the charge on the object Q over the distance R from the center. Technically, there's a shift here, and we call that zero. Right? We say that whatever the potential is at infinity, it should be zero. Right? There's no energy at zero, right? If you have, or at infinity, so if you have two things that are infinitely separated apart, there's no way that they can influence each other, but only if it's infinitely separated. So we say this is zero. And the reason why that's important is because if you were to call that some other number, if you were to use some other reference point, then every time you added another object, you'd increase the reference. All right. So each, each object would add some potential in there, which would add uh, something to your reference energy. But it doesn't do that. right? 
that doesn't increase the reference energy. It's actually the interactions that increase the energy because it's potential energies. And potential energies all have to do with the configuration, right? It has to do with how the configuration works. So we just say that it's zero at infinity. All right, so we have the potential from a point charge or a spherical um, source is inversely proportional Oops. to the distance from the center, or the distance from the point. But And that's what this is. This is 1 over r here, right? 1 over r gives you something that's inversely proportional. Um, and that's similar to what we saw with the energies, right? When we saw the energies for gravitation, right? The energy for gravitation was g times m over m times m over r. And when we looked at the force, it was g times m, g times m times m over r squared, which is what you got, which is what we got in the field source thing from the last lecture. I think I think that was three. Um, that is what we got for the behavior of the field. So the potential and the field are related in the same way that the potential energy of gravitation is related to the force of gravitation, all right? So these inverse square laws are sort of universal. They're very similar. So that's very, very nice. Um, and we say the reference in this case is V of infinity is equal to zero. But we're never going to do anything at infinity, so you don't have to worry about it except to remember that you don't have this particular term here. This goes to zero, so it goes away. All right? So I'll do one example for that, so I'll figure out what the, um, what the potential is at the edge of that sphere. And then I'll go through and do all the problems for the homework, and hopefully we can, and hopefully that will prepare you for the quiz. All right. Talk to you next time. Bye.